people who are successful have certain skills that they use. Whether you're trying to get into a certain college or university or you're trying to um, encourage somebody to start a relationship or you're trying to make a sale, or you're trying to make a purchase. There's certain skills that the winning person, the successful person in that situation has. And that's what we're going to go over today. Four different skills that you want to start practicing in all areas of your life so that you can be more successful. The first one is probably the most important and probably the one that we all use the least. Listen, whenever you're in a relationship and you're having a confrontation or, um, you know, maybe you're in a sales situation, there is a saying that the person, the last person to talk is usually the winner. So you want to practice your listening skills. Don't be the one that's doing all the talking. Think of yourself when you're in a situation, you know, let's say you're going to buy a car and you know exactly what you want. You're there to purchase and the salesman is just going on and on and on about maybe this particular car that they're trying to sell. And in your mind, you're thinking, I don't even want that car. I want this one or something else. And they're not listening to you. So what is your reaction? You just want to walk away. Um, even when you're trying to sell something, if you're the person trying to t let the other person know how much they need what you have, even if they do need it, you're selling uh, a shake for healthcare. Of course, this person needs the shake. They need to lose weight, but it's not up to you to tell them that. You need to listen and find out what their desires are and what their needs and wants are and then offer the solution. So it's really that step of sitting back and just listening and letting that person come to that conclusion themselves. And you'll be amazed at how much easier it is. It's the, the person who does the listening is actually the person that usually has the power in the situation. And as you're listening, don't come across as I am the authority and I know better and I'm just going to sit here and listen. You want to have empathy and just be human about it and, and be in a relationship, whatever that situation is, and just put yourself in that person's shoes. Listen. And you're going to find out what it is that they need, what they want, and whether or not you have what they need or want. And if you can provide a solution, sometimes you can't, and that's okay. But be human, be comfortable, and listen. Number two is be ethical. Know when to stop <laughs> is basically what that means. Is Sometimes you want a sale so bad or you want that situation so bad. Let's go to relationships. How many times have you seen somebody or been in the situation where they want that relationship so bad that they won't stop pushing? They almost become like a stalker and it's almost like they become desperate and it's really a turnoff. And that's how you're going to look when you start pushing and pushing and pushing when there's that line of the other person doesn't want what you have and just walk away. It's okay. Not every person out there wants what you have to offer. So to be successful, you have to know when to walk away because really you're wasting a lot of precious time, time that you can never get back on somebody that doesn't want what you have. So just be ethical. Okay, that's fine. Walk away and offer it to somebody else that really could use it and wants it. Number three is you want to be good at building relationships and having tenacity. And what that means is, is understanding if you meet somebody and they start to share with you maybe um, a situation and you know that you have a product that will help that need. The problem is if you met them as a stranger and you really don't have a relationship, have the tenacity to, to know to just kind of let that situation unfold the way it does, get some follow-up information, and then come back later and check in with the person. And by doing that, you're, you're building a relationship and that person's going to get to know you, like you, and trust you, and eventually will purchase from you. Um, same thing with all those other areas of life. Um, think about people who are trying to get their friends or, or strangers to go to church. When a stranger walks up to you and says, you know, come to my church, it might be the greatest place in the world, and they're coming from you know, a great place in their heart, but your first instinct is like, whoa, I don't even know you. But if they came to you and just kind of mentioned to you that they go to such and such a church and they like it and they're blah, 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 but they're not really inviting you, you're like, oh, okay. And then you kind of build a relationship enough where they say, hey, you know, maybe we can be in touch sometime. And then they follow up and maybe share something else and check in on you. How are you doing? You know, after the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh conversation, 
then when they invite you, you're like, you know, I really like this person. I have a relationship with them. I'm going to go check it out. So it works that way with everything. You have to, most people aren't going to respond to you till the seventh or eighth touch, if that makes sense, or communication. That's when they might start opening their eyes and start trusting you and start um, being willing to accept what you have to offer, even listen at that point. Um, and then what be sure that you follow up with people that kind of goes under the same thing know when to follow up um i i know in my own situation i was looking for somebody to help me with something in my business and i had met this lady and we we she gave me her contact information um i was actually asking her for some technical help and anyway we contacted we had a a, a zoom call together it went really well well then she sent me her um, her price that she was charging and what she was offering. I, it wasn't so much that I had a problem with the price, but it was part of what she was offering I didn't need. So my request to her was, you know, can we reevaluate what you're offering to me? Like, let's redesign this. And, you know, would you be willing to do this, this, and this? And she never, ever followed up. And I was like, wow. I mean, I was sitting there ready to make a purchase it's just that i wanted to make sure that my purchase was what i needed if that makes sense it was one of those things that you know it could have been built um it was she was talking about giving the, me a map to help me with something and part of that map i didn't need but the point is she never followed up and i was and i learned a big lesson from that that always follow up because in the end either they want what you have or they don't and you're never going to know unless you follow up and again you don't have to be pushy about it. Just say, Hey, I'm just checking in. Did you think about what I had to offer or can we modify it? Does this work better? And again, in the end, if people don't want it, it's okay. There's other people out there that do. So just know when to follow up, you know, when you're checking in, building that relationship and, and, and it's a process. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. The fourth skill that successful people has have is they boundaries. They know what their self worth is and they know the value of what they're offering. And many people, when they start to offer something, um, we're all guilty of it, all, all of us. You might be teaching somebody how to play the piano, okay, as an example. And you're thinking, this is so easy. It's like a skill I have. It's easy for me, so I can't charge a lot. How could I do that? Um, and so you maybe charge $5 an hour when the lady down the street is charging $30 an hour. And you're like, how can they do that? Well, what is your value um, for that skill? And if you don't, if you don't think that that skill that you're offering that that person is valuable, then why should they? So the interesting thing is they'll, they're going to go to the person paying $30 are charging $30 because they're going to think that person has more to offer when really you could be even. I'm going to use another example. My husband is in construction and he, my, uh, a friend was, um, asking him to put down a wood floor and they were out looking for other bids and it was a friend and he was giving them a discount. And he said, this is what I can do this, 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 and this, and here's my price. Well, he asked them, go get a bid. And they did. And he, he said, okay, I'm going to, you know, beat that bid and do this, this, and this for you. In the end, the person ended up going with somebody that had 30 years experience. They were the highest priced bid that they got. And the, the funny thing is in the end, they ended up getting screwed, to be honest. Um, the person did not put in the bid um, to cut the doors, um, to shave the doors. They were doing um, change orders. That's how construction people will add more money to your bid. And when that should have been in the bid in the first place, when you're putting floors in, you know that doors have to be shaved. But my point is in her mind, she was going with somebody with all this experience and that value, that high price in her mind equaled that experience. And when that experienced person, they still sent somebody, you know, that wasn't experienced. They, they sent their employees to do the job. So from that, we learned in our business with the construction that put a high price because people see when they see a high price, they see a high value. It's just the way people think. So those are the four things that you really want to work on. You want to listen. You want to ethically know when to just walk away. Don't be pushy. And number three, have the tenacity to build, to know when to follow up, how to follow up and, and build that relationship. And number four, set boundaries, put a value, um, give yourself self-worth, see yourself as valuable. And then whatever you're offering, put a good value on it so that people see that you are worth it. And it's all just psychology, honestly. Um, so 
those are four things, four skills, work on those um, in your business and even in your life. If you work on those four things, you will find that you have more success when in any endeavor that you go for. Um, before you leave, make sure you um, hit subscribe to my subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so that you'll know when my new videos come out right now as of this video i make a a video every six times a week monday through saturday um i will be changing that shortly and i'll tell you why but i have a goal and um <laughs> right now there are six a week and they're there to help you build your business so hopefully this was helpful for you and it's a life skill that you can use in everything not just your business and i will see you on the next video thanks again for watching